My grandfather was from Northern Ireland. My father was born in Dublin. My mother was Polish, born in Canada. I don't know, but there is a, there, there is a, I remember my father pointing his finger at me at one point, you know, when I said I was going into the theater and he said at one point, you're not. All I could think of is if he gets that finger one inch closer, I will bite it off. So something in me said, this is not acceptable. I remember hearing Langham on and on at some young man and I waited to talk to him because I thought that's not acceptable. He went out the other door, I never saw him, I waited my lunch hour. And I had a contretemps with Langham in my dressing room at one point because I had gone to visit Hirsch who was dying in Toronto and I was five minutes late for technical notes and all through the evening he kept saying, well, you know, because of our late start we can't do that, or, you know, we're too late. And I kept looking at Elliot Hayes going, what's going on? And later he said, you know, he came into the dressing room the next day and said, I was very upset with you about you. I said, yes, I know. He went, what? I said, I came in, I apologized. Uh, I had called stage management. I had gone off the road, made a phone call, because there were no cell phones at that time, gone and made a phone call to say I would be five minutes late. Uh, he said, well, I didn't hear you. I said, well, I did. He said, well, I thought you didn't care about the play. I said, of course I care about the play. Well, I said, and, but you didn't let go. You went on all night. You mentioned it three or four times. He said, no, I did. I said, yes, you did. You mentioned it. And I said, and he said, well, well, it's fine now. I said, no, actually, it's not. Because I don't know how you expect me to be open and vulnerable as Portia when I have to wear three coats of armor into the rehearsal hall. He said, well, I think you, you're going to be very good. You know? I said, well, you've never told me that. Maybe you've said that at dinner parties, but you've never told me. And, and then he, it was all of a sudden, it switched. You know, and uh, I said, you know, I go into the, the, the rehearsal room and cry. He said, well, I didn't know that. I said, well, now you do. But I'm not going to take up time in the rehearsal hall doing that. I'm not going to have a scene in the rehearsal hall. I'll go away privately and deal with it. Or Where does the presence of mind come in, Shona, to be that clear with someone? My father would say mouthiness. <laughs> 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 if you were mouthy. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think the thing I was always, that upset me, I still remember watching, was it The Fugitive Kind? I don't know, it was a Marlon Brando movie when he was put in jail uh, in a southern town. I, I remember always being enraged about injustice. I think that was it. I think it pressed something in me that I said, that's not fair. That's not fair. And I think that's what and when I saw unfair, and as an actor, you take a lot of it on because you think you deserve it. Oh, I'm not very good. I deserve to be yelled at. Oh, I'm not doing what they want. I deserve some snide remark. And then when you hear it, I think it was hearing it from the outside where I went, that is really not acceptable. That is unkind and unnecessary and will not enable that actor to be better. And I said, you know, you're not, I said, you're not going to bully me into a better performance. And after that, he was fine. After that, with Langham, we had a lovely time. And I learned so much from him. Um, uh, but I think he was used to drama on stage. And I think he was used to it with his leading ladies. It was almost like some kind of strange relationship. And I admired him greatly. And I, I, I loved and admired Hirsch. Um, but I. I guess I wasn't afraid to tussle. That doesn't mean that I wasn't, that I didn't weep and that I didn't feel, oh, I guess I'm awful. So is tussling part of an actor's survival kit in oh, rehearsal? Oh, for some people. Some people are very smart. They do their tussling privately. They email or they call on the phone. I, I've always felt that if you have something to be dealt with as an actor, you do it in the rehearsal hall. And especially after you have a child, you know, uh, you think, I don't have time to, to do this outside of the rehearsal hall. Let's figure this out in the hall. Uh, so I don't think I'm very politic. I'm sure I am called difficult. Are you? Do you have a reputation? I'm sure I do. Yes, I'm sure I do. What do you think of that? I've not heard it. I'm just curious. Well, I was told once that I was difficult and that another director also thought I was difficult, except that director who thought I was difficult 
had offered me two other jobs. So I thought, well, I guess it's worth it then. Um, I don't find my, I think I have ideas. I will try something and I will try to please you and I'll try to give what you want. And if you want me to move there, I'll find a reason to move there. If I think maybe it's better there, I'll say, what do you think about this? Uh, directors, you know, other directors I've worked with, you know, go, what are they talking about? I don't understand that. You've been an absolute pleasure. So I don't know. I think it's personalities. I think it's subjective. I think it's taste. And I don't hold it against them for thinking I'm difficult because in rehearsal hall, we all go do this. We all go, oh my God, what a hard day. But that doesn't um, reduce my respect for a director uh, if, they, if, they, if they have good ideas and they, they are, are helping actors. I, I, I don't mind, you know, uh, that.